Age of Mythology is about taking control of one pantheon of gods and using their supernatural and national military to destroy other gods. We do this by producing villagers to harvest food, wood, gold, and favor. Villagers also build civilian and military buildings, including settlements to build more villagers. However, settlements can only be built at specific settlement locations on the map. Once enough resources and buildings are built, you can advance to the next age. There are four ages, Archaic, Classical, Heroic, and Mythical. Archaic is the beginning of the game with limited or no military units available. In this stage of the game, you are harvesting resources, scouting the map, finding your opponent, and planning future expansions. Classical is where the game has its first military conflict. You know where your opponent is, you are building your military up and possibly harassing the enemy, and expand to your second settlement. Heroic Age gives you access to advanced units with siege capabilities, and a lot of your counter units that can decimate an opponent if they overinvest in one unit type. In this age, you have expanded to a third settlement. In the Mythic Age, you have access to all of your strongest units and buildings and god powers. No structure is safe from the powerhouse siege units and high-end Mythic units that tear apart regular human soldiers. This brings us to our playthrough with the Greeks. Our strategy to secure victory through the ages is by choosing Hades, the Greek god of the underworld and archers. We hunt with our villagers for a fast source of food, sticking others on wood and gold. Our scout cavalry investigates the location of where the enemy and other resource nodes. We will fast expand to a close by settlement. We will use the sentry god power to defend it. Each god starts with a playstyle bonus and a power. You get more powers as you expand your pantheon at each age. The sentry tower spawns living towers around our settlement. Pairing this with towers, we have a formidable defensive position. If we further strengthen this strategy by using Greek's tough hero units, then we will have a force that is economically strong and rather annoying for the AI to deal with. We want favor to produce myth units. The Greeks get favor by worshiping at a temple with villagers. We want myth units because they have big attack bonuses versus human units and other myth units. Their counter is hero units. That's why we are relying on the dark heroes and towers of Hades to defend our minotaurs. Minotaurs have a gore attack that knocks a unit away. This is great with hit and run tactics using our towers for defensive fire. A minotaur will smack a unit for big damage. A tower will rain arrows down on his friends while the minotaur retreats or tanks for the towers. We use heroes to fight and kite units around our towers in the beginning. Meanwhile, villagers slowly encroach with towers to contain the enemy and drain their military might and resources by fighting too soon. We advance to the Heroic Age and grab the Temple of Apollo buff that heals any units around it. This gives our hit and run tactics a huge advantage. We fight off the AI as they try to take our gold with their villagers. Finally, we are able to advance to the Mythic Age. We gain access to the Plenty, which will give us a passive stream of all resources. We also get the Colossus, which will batter down the structures of the enemy as our forces mop up. This is the end of the AI and this playthrough. However, there are other gods and factions in the game. The Berserker Norse, the gold-obsessed Egyptians, the economic powerhouse of the Atlanteans, and the hordes of the Chinese. Which one would you like to see? I will see you all on the next one. Avi, Atqui, Vali, Maul.